Um, who has had to read poetry for school and fallen asleep? <laughs> okay, so this is not that kind of poetry. And you guys have already shown me that you can be loud. So can you do something for me? Okay, so you're gonna clap after me. Ready? Poet, you just clapped a haiku. <laughs> In the theme of the night, your mission, should you choose to accept it, love, love, never self destruct. So I'm going to throw a couple pieces at you guys tonight. If you're feeling in the mood, you can clap, you can hoot, you can holler, you can say ooh, ah, you can say turn up, turn down for what? <laughs> ooh. Very good. Ah. Well done. <laughs> All right. So, ooh, ooh. Um, this is a rainy day poem, and I just performed it in La Jolla in the rain on a rooftop with a bunch of strangers recently. <laughs> it's been fun. Um, rule number one of poetry is never date a poet. <laughs> Rule number two is never near miss with poet. This is called consequence or, God forbid, a poem. <laughs> you will never ask where my words taste of lavender. Why tonight I am orange gray twilight sun setting on weeks of waterfall inside window pane. My skin is nothing but glass. You heard the edit in one of my poems on second listen. Clutched my hand till the waves of adrenaline faded, smiled when I said I liked you a year after I said I love you. And then it evaporated, leaving only your ghost footprints and all this torrent cascading up into the sinks. The cat has taken to jumping onto the stove which makes as much sense as me retrieving the hummingbird feeders with pot holders and your kamikaze postcard from nowhere that asked if we could just pretend that the same pulse you once held was never a red tide crashing electric blue for the stars above your smile, which would be easier for you, darling. Asking a poet to never speak of something again is like opening the basement door in a horror flick, eyes peeled for sunshine and puppies. <laughs> Neither of us is known for easy. You can run as many miles as the meaning of life, and I do hours of yoga trying to unfold myself right side out. No, I am not sweating. I am mourning at midnight. I am insomniac, desperate to dream, terrified I might fall awake. I am both months of too scared shy to be honest, even with myself, and ballsy enough to admit to rooftops full of strangers that part of me will always love you. I am not sorry for confusing transparency with translucency, glass, or ghost. Hope has this funny shine. It haunts us with a belief in things no one else can see. Tickles the irony of knowing that you will come back to my footprint. They are falling in my heart in spirals. It is learning to say I want, I need, God forbid, I feel, I want. I need to be with someone who will laugh with me about how I fell in love with orange blossoms, with beautiful that fights so hard to become fragrance just shy of dancing into sweet substance, something solid, like a promise to stay. Friend, please do not think me foolish for hoping one day you will look something a lot like her. So if you're listening closely, no, I did not mess up my pronouns. Um, yes. I think it is a wonderful, wonderful thing about this place that very many of us go back to very different worlds when we finish the recessional. Um, and one of the worlds that I, I fall in, there's a lot more playing around with like, huh, you're awfully privileged, aren't you? Um, 
So this is a little bit to do with that, and just a little bit to do with other people that, you know, grandmas, right? Everybody loves grandmothers. I think, hands down, that's kind of a universal. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just about a bunch of things. Do you know what it's like to miss someone? Not wish you were here, even milk carton missing. I mean the swift breeze that catches you sideways in a crosswalk on a day that is all sunshine and butterfly and then the drowning tumbles you roaring. My grandmother kept a painted tiger in her basement. She died in February and I miss her. When I was small, we would ride a train past miles of tree fingers reaching like lace into angry skies. The snow whispered secrets to the branches and danced under our toes as we walked to press our noses into shining Christmas windows. The shop doors were heavy book covers opening to magic and peppermint laced hot chocolate. Somewhere inside this treasure chest, I buried the weird kid who had recurring nightmares about mad scientists poisoning chocolate milk, but... <laughs> All it ever took was my grandmother's fingertips tapping the window pane on my shoulder for me to know unconditional. Now, I live where I can roll the sunset around the roof of my mouth, and sometimes it bites me thinking about all of the fairy stories we swallow so we can sleep at night. I read that they planted a tree for Emmett the other day. Someday, there will be a forest of Pine and Ash, of Emmett and George, of Oscar and Amadou, of Trayvon, of Renisha and Sean and Eric and Michael and Tamir, and lovers will carve their hearts, their names, their beloved names. It is too easy to let their battle cry slip lullaby, and I can't fall asleep this time, but I can't wake up either, so I YouTube two princes charming, watch them get engaged in a Utah Home Depot over and over until all I can see is the glitter of sunrise on fresh snow, because if there is anything in this world that is impossible come true, y'all, is the guy who had to get on the PA and stutter. Um, um, can we get a, a cleanup of fabulous and somebody loves you in the lumber aisle <laughs> in Utah? I wish our souls all cleaned up so easy. I wish the wind wasn't a ramshackle prophet. The moon didn't rise every night. The center of a snowflake, its branches, the ghosts of the six queer kids that died on the street that day. And some nights all I can do is lash my eyes together and fall into this waking dream where I am covered in butterflies, their wings clipped from the funny pages the obituaries. I'm riding a train of headlines past miles and miles of trees. I trace, I miss you on frosted glass and dot the eye with my nose. Impossible is knowing you taught me how to name every snowflake in an avalanche.